is your help. I'm Dr. Mike Smith, and on today's show, we're going to talk about how we could save thousands of lives if we better understand how arterial plaques form and how they develop. You know, it's not all about cholesterol. We're also going to discuss how not to feel so bloated after you eat and how to improve your overall nutritional status. But first, in the news. An article published in the Journal of Nutrition reports an association between high omega-3 levels and a reduced risk of age-related macular degeneration, the number one cause of blindness in the United States. The investigation included 963 participants aged 73 and older. Blood samples were collected between 1999 and 2001 and were analyzed for the long chain omega-3s, including the most important ones, EPA and DHA. The subjects underwent eye examinations during 2006 and 2008 and were followed for 31 months, so it's a nice long study. The results show that having a higher level of total omega-3 fatty acids was associated with a decreased risk of macular degeneration in this age group. A group of scientists from the Department of Epidemiology of China recently performed a meta-analysis to assess the effects of metformin on cancer incidence and mortality. They looked at 37 studies with over 1.5 million participants. The scientists concluded that metformin can reduce the overall incidence of cancer, but showed the most benefit for liver, pancreatic, colon, and breast cancer. Additionally, there was a decrease in mortality for liver and breast cancer. A published study revealed a greater risk of heart disease and death from any cause over a 2.8 year period for men experiencing erectile dysfunction. Researchers analyzed data from over 95,000 men. Erectile dysfunction was graded as none, mild, moderate, or severe based on survey responses. Hospital data reported 7,855 cardiovascular disease emissions over two years, and 2,300 deaths were documented over 2.5 years of follow-up. Now, among the men who had no previous cardiovascular disease, those classified as having severe ED had a 60% greater risk of heart disease and a 93% greater risk of dying when compared with men who did not report ED. And that is the news. Coming up on Your Health, we're going to talk about how we can save thousands of lives every year by better understanding how arterial plaques form. Stay tuned. You know that CoQ10 is essential for heart health. You know that low-dose aspirin helps prevent heart attacks. And you know that the omega-3s in fish oil may reduce the risk of heart disease. What you may not know is that you know all of this because of life extension. It's the power of science, the power of life, the power of life extension. So do you feel bloated all the time? Or maybe just after you eat? Now that could be a sign that your digestive system just isn't working very well, but it could mean something a little worse. It could reflect an overall poor nutritional state. My first guest is Jamie Mass, and she's gonna help us figure out how to solve this. She is a registered dietitian and an expert nutrition with the Life Extension Foundation. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, why does my sister always call me feeling bloated after breakfast, after lunch, after dinner. I mean, that's, I mean, she doesn't call just to have a conversation with me. It's always, I'm bloated. What's going on? Well, she's very uncomfortable, it seems, and it could have something to do with enzymes. The first thing I think of when someone says bloated, enzymes. So as we get older, we start to lose them like everything else. So my hair is falling out, my hormones are dropping, and now you're telling me my digestive enzymes are going down. Correct. So, well, I don't feel bloated. Should I, I mean, I, I actually feel pretty good after I eat. Is this mm -hmm. something I should be worried about as well? I do suggest it for other people as well, not just someone who's expressing that they've discomfort or bloating. Why? Because if you don't feel that bloating, but there is some undigested food there, okay. you may not be absorbing the micronutrients, ah. vitamins and minerals you need. That's important, right? Yes. Because you're only as healthy as your gut. Exactly. So, it, and let's, let's go through this uh, for the audience. If you can't digest your food or, or supplements, if you can't absorb those nutrients, and if you can't eliminate the waste, you're not going to be that healthy, are you? That is a huge problem. And that's why the bloating for my sister could actually reflect something serious going on for her. It's a little red flag saying, pay attention to me. And sometimes we just don't pay attention enough to the body. We say, oh, it's just a little bit of bloating. But your sister's trying to tell you something. Yeah, well, her body's telling her <laughs> something, and she calls me to yes. let her know what her body's You're telling her. You're the doctor. Her, right? <laughs> that's right. So, but, you know, a lot of people worry about the, you know, 
they're, they're trying to minimize how many pills they take every day. Mm-hmm. Can this be excessive, though, for someone who, who feels okay? Or you really believe that we need to start focusing on this in adulthood? I think it is important to focus on. We need to make sure that through the years, we are absorbing our, the nutrition from right. our food, or else we may have a concern down the line. Does this begin at some, at some age? For everyone, it's a little bit different. It will start to decrease over time, but I've worked with clients, customers that okay. experience this in their 30s, others that don't experience it until they're 50 or 60 years old. And so bloating is kind of like that sign that, that says, okay, now you got a significant issue. Correct. But you want to you be more proactive before we get to that state, right? At, right, and when people mention excessive or is it too much, we need to remind ourselves, again, this is something that is decreasing, as you okay. mentioned before, in the body. Any specific populations uh, of patients that need to be more you know, worried about enzymes, digestive enzymes? I do, I do believe so, yes. Uh, people who suffer from other digestive concerns that are at high risk, for absorption issues already, okay. and then also people possibly with uh, food sensitivities or something like celiac disease. W- w- okay, which is almost, it seems like it's an epidemic in this country now. That gluten sensitivity yeah. versus celiac disease, yes, th- it's very present. So I noticed the Life Extension Foundation has a, a decent digestive enzyme product, but they've taken an enzyme out of it, amylase. And created, right. Yeah, so, so mm-hmm. explain that. Why, why did they take amylase out? What was the reason or thought process there? You're creating a new blend there by taking the enzyme out. You're creating a different product altogether for okay. digestive and health. And why did they do that? What was the point? The amylase is focused at carbohydrate breakdown. So those breads, pastas, and cereals, that's the focus. We don't want to break those down so quickly because what will happen turns into sugar and goes right into the bloodstream. So the, so the one nutrient we get plenty of is right. the sugar, right? So exactly. that's the one we could kind of slow down on Correct. and that might actually help us. So diabetics, people with weight issues, exactly. Et now, um, how, do I, how do I go about picking a high quality product? What do I look for on that back label? You want to make sure that all of your macronutrients are covered. In addition, you also want to look at fiber. So a representation of that macronutrient in an enzyme. Okay. So if you're talking about protein. I know. Proteases. Correct. Okay. Keep quizzing me. Come on. <laughs> Fats. Lipase. lipase. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the fibers. Very important yeah. because that will cause a lot of discomfort if you're not and breaking more, those and down. And people are eating more fibers, right? And Correct. so we got to make sure we, we can break those down. Give me a, an enzyme that breaks down fibers. Cellulase would be a great example and one to look for. Jamie, what great advice. So my sister really needs to take this serious, right? Certainly. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me again. Coming up next as I see it. The issue is your health. We'll be right back. You know you need CoQ10 and fish oil for your heart. You also know you need a multivitamin to maintain your health. But what you don't know is that an award-winning CoQ10, fish oil, and multivitamin are all made by Life Extension. Why settle for less than the power of science? The power of life. The power of Life Extension. As I see it, the one risk, one mechanism, one drug approach to heart disease is killing Americans. To fully eradicate heart disease, we really need to focus on the 17 known risk factors, not just cholesterol. And don't forget, you're only as healthy as your gut. So add some digestive enzymes to your regimen so you can stop feeling so bloated and improve your nutritional status. For more information on today's show, visit yourhealthshow.com and subscribe to the Life Extension Magazine today. For your health, I'm Dr. Mike.